What is OCI and why should I care about it? OCI refers to the Open Container Initiative, which is generally a community that cares a lot about the development of open standards for containers. But whoa there, let's step back a second. I am zooming into your brain and making a really strong assumption that you even know what containers are. You're, you're probably thinking of your Tupperware right now. So let's talk about these containers. I, I, I don't mean that kind of container. I mean a Linux container. Let's do a quick and dirty definition. A container is a portable encapsulation of an environment. It's a really great way for you to package an operating system, libraries, your favorite software, and some special set of environment variables into a package that you can then move and run anywhere. I like to think that a good way to start building your understanding of containers is to generally outline the problems that the container solve. So what are these containers good for? Generally, the things are reproducibility, portability, development environments, continuous integration, flexibility, and isolation. Let's break these down a little bit. First, let's talk about reproducibility. Let's say that you're a scientist and you have this amazing pipeline that you run and it makes this awesome discovery and you want to share it with your friends. Well, that's, that's a really hard problem. And it's a hard problem because there's many differences in environments, in hardware and software, heck, even security. And so just the simple thing of like handing your software over to someone else and having them run it reproducibly or running it, basically running it again, it's highly challenging. So a reproducible workflow, on the other hand, is one that uses containers to get us around this problem. It reduces the, f the frequent uttering of the phrase, well, it ran on my computer. Nobody ever wants to hear that because when they're facing an error message and they're super frustrated, like who cares if it ran on someone else's computer? It's not running on my computer. The next problem that containers solve really well is portability. And this is really simple. If a container is this binary, a file that can sit on my desktop and I can send it to you on Google Drive or I can maybe attach it to an email or just put it on a disk and hand it to you, that makes it really easy to move from one machine to another. It used to be the case that if you wanted to develop what's called a simple model view control application, generally meaning you have some application and a database and a web server and your, your back end is serving up views for this front end, you would need to actually install all the components on your host. And heck, when I was in grad school and before I found Docker, which is a container technology, I used to do that. And it was really, really hard because if I wanted to work on, for example, two of these applications, they would conflict. I would have to bring down one server and bring up another server. And so containers totally help with that because you can have multiple different uh, sets of applications via containers running at the same time. Well, not always the same time, but you can easily bring one up and bring the other down without substantial work. The next thing containers are really awesome for is testing, which is commonly called continuous integration. You can run your tests across operating systems, changing up environments really quickly just by way of changing your containers. And you do this on a single host. Next is flexibility. Given the rapid changing landscape of pretty much everything in software engineering and infrastructure, the technologies that we use really need to be flexible to this change. Because if they're not, that means that some admin somewhere has to log into a host and like change everything and it's arduous and it's hard and lol, well, it just sounds terrible. Change is unavoidable. If you build your application as a containerized one, that means that 
deployment really means just testing this new container and then deploying it on, for example, a cloud provider. If the cost of the provider changes and you feel betrayed and you want to change to a different one, it's really trivial to just move your container to a different provider. You haven't set up your perfect machine that you then would have to do again. The final problem that containers solve really well is isolation. Now, this level can actually vary quite a bit based on container technology. Some container technologies like Docker will give you more of a complete isolation, meaning the environment, and then there are other container technologies like Singularity that are optimized for high performance computing, where you actually want a more seamless environment um, from the host machine. So let's step back. Uh, I always go back to the use case of a scientist because that's sort of um, my background. So if you're a scientist and you want to create a reproducible analysis, you're going to package all of your scripts and possibly small amounts of data, not too much data though, your container will get like super fat, uh, into a container and you want to share it with a colleague. He would have confidence that it would run again and it would actually run exactly as you had intended and there would be no error, error, you know, wrong version of package, rah, 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 why doesn't it run on my computer? If you're a web developer, which is another common use case, and you want to quickly deploy a complicated application that uses a bunch of different technologies, you can do that with containers. So that is why containers are really useful. In summary, today I talked to you about some of the various problems that containers solved, namely making pipelines reproducible, having a format of some kind of environment or software that is portable, providing development environments or easy ways to spin up and down very complicated integrations of different tools, providing a really nice way to test software in, in continuous integration just by way of switching up containers to, to vary your environment, giving you flexibility to jump between something like a cloud provider based on moving your container if the costs change, and then isolation, giving you a level of isolation for your software, either a lot or very little, depending on your use case. But wait a minute here, I said earlier that we were going to talk about OCI, the Open Container Initiative. Well, I play a fiendish trick on you. And the reason is because I think it's important that you first understand containers before you dive into why there's an entire uh, organization or community around making standards for them. So this is what we're gonna talk about next time because I'm very aware that your attention span is really only about five minutes and I think we're already over. But basically we're gonna go a little bit more into what virtualization is and then we're gonna talk about specifically what projects are owned by OCI that will help us to achieve these goals of reproducibility, portability, development environments, continuous integration, flexibility, and isolation. So thanks everyone, that's all I have for this first video. I'm not making promises about what comes in the future, but I assure you I will probably be talking about something else. Dinosaur out. <laughs>